Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished members of the committee. My, my name is Dusty Horwitt, and I'm a public lands analyst at Environmental Working Group. We're a nonprofit research and advocacy organization based here in Washington and in Oakland, California. Thank you for this opportunity, and I thank Mr. Snyder for agreeing to go first. Um, for the last several years, Environmental Working Group has analyzed mining claims on federal land using a computerized database from the Bureau of Land Management. Mr. Chairman, what we have found is a frenzy of claim staking that is increasing every day and threatens a crisis for many of America's most treasured national parks, including the Grand Canyon, where there's been an explosion of uranium mining claims. This modern-day land rush is driven by the sky-high price of uranium, gold, and other metals, which is caused by demand from China, the United States, and other players around the globe. It's facilitated by a law, as we noted, written in 1872 when Ulysses S. Grant was president. More than four years of analysis has led us to one inescapable conclusion. Under the current wide-open mining law, where mining interests, unlike oil and gas companies, can state claims with no government oversight or approval, vast portions of the American West are at the mercy of global demand for minerals. This is simply unacceptable. Without changes to the law, the global demand for minerals could easily result in situations where companies begin prospecting and developing mining claims right next to incomparable wonders like the Grand Canyon, other national parks, or even local water supplies. Since 2003, mining claims on public land in 12 western states have increased by more than 80 percent. You can see it on the, the chart displayed here. Active claims are now at their highest level since an annual claim maintenance fee took effect in the mid-1990s. Claims have increased in each western state. Here's an image of New Mexico, where claims, active claims as of July 2007, marked in blue, have increased 50 percent in the last three and a half years. Each claim on the, on the map represents dozens or even hundreds of claims on the ground. Here's an image of Colorado, where claims have increased by 239 percent since 2003. That's the largest increase of any state. Again, these claims on the map represent thousands of claims on the ground, as we'll see in just a moment. This dramatic surge in claims could be extremely problematic, because once a claim is staked, the federal government interprets mining law as providing virtually no way to stop hard rock mining, short of buying out mining claims or other extraordinary measures, even when mining is right next to treasured national parks such as the Grand Canyon. Here's a satellite image of the Grand Canyon. You can see the claims in blue clustered on both the north and south rims. We found that as of July, mining claims hold 815 claims within five miles of Grand Canyon National Park. 805 of those were staked since January 2003. Most of these claims are for uranium. Those identified as uranium claims have the yellow and black symbol. A Canadian company, Katera Resources, has already proposed to drill exploratory holes for uranium just north of the canyon. The operation would include a helicopter pad to carry supplies in and out. Next, let's look at a map of the canyon country in southern Colorado and Utah. Many of these claims are also for uranium. Arches National Park in Utah has 869 mining claims within five miles of its boundary, 864 of those staked since 2003. Canyonlands National Park has 233 claims within five miles, all of them staked since January 2003. And some of the claims on the Colorado side are, tre are near lands that are treasured for their scenic and recreational value. Without proper protections for our public lands, these claims can be very costly. In 1996, the government paid $65 million to buy out patented mining claims just three miles from Yellowstone National Park that would have been the site of a major gold mine. The mine would have been located at the headwaters of three streams that flow into the park. You'll note the town of Moab, Utah on the map here. The Department of Energy has begun a project to clean up 16 million tons of radioactive uranium mine waste near the Colorado River. The waste is a threat to drinking water for millions downstream. Cleanup estimates range from $412 million to $697 million, and the project may not be complete until 2028. Mining pollution, our leading source of toxic pollution, is often not contained at the site of the mine. In Summitville, Colorado, in 1992, a spill of cyanide and heavy metal-laden water killed some 20 miles of the Alamosa River. The area is now a Superfund site. A similar disaster occurred in the 1990s at Oregon's Formosa mine. Just this month, that site was also made a Superfund site. Mining provides important raw materials for our economy, but we also need a mining law that, in the face of global demand for minerals, 
protects our most important places, and allows land managers to balance mining with other interests, such as drinking water, just as they can with oil and gas development. With our most treasured places at risk, the time for reform is now. I thank the committee for this opportunity and look forward to your questions.